Hi, -o. Tom here. Burn Star Channel, Drift Hobo stuff, you know. Your favorite Drift Hobo is back with his vlog. 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 Like Vlad the Impaler. Vlog the Imposter. Anywho, I digress. So, so far, living in the South has treated me exceptionally well. This off season, I've probably been on track without sitting in front of my spreadsheet. Let's just say since I've moved to Florida, I've probably had 20 days on track in a period of time where normally there is no driving because the weather is absolute ass. So that is just something that's just unparalleled to anything I've experienced before in my life. This has literally been the best winter of my life, hands down. And that includes the winter that I spent in Mexico. Was arguably down there the climate was quite similar to what it was like in Florida but it was Mexico so there wasn't really anything to do you know anyhow at any rate big events small events OSW private days I was really concerned when I moved down here how the local scene was going to accept me because you know my YouTube channel is marginal at best like I don't really have a following it's not like anybody knows who I am you know so it was just another nerd showing up to events down here. And this drift scene is very different in different regions. You know, like some areas are super welcoming and everybody goes and other areas are very clicky and you don't get to drive with people because they're all worried about their liveries and their cars. And it just depends where you're at. And so I didn't know what Florida was going to be like. And man, it really blew my highest hopes right out of the water like the people down here were so nice to me so accepting of a new nerd sliding with them and one of the things that's the biggest difference between down here versus up north is that up north all these drift organizers like you know these boys for example they put out a schedule months in advance and then you plan out your whole season like essentially in january or say february you know exactly what you're going to be doing every weekend down here, that's just not how this works, you know. 90% um, of Florida drifting happens at Orlando Speed World. And a good portion of that isn't events. I mean, they have those, and they're scheduled, and there is a page for it and all that. But a good amount of driving is private days where people just rent the track. So 16 dudes get together and shred. The trick is there is no centralized organization behind any of that, like none. So the only way to drive private days is to know that there is a private day. And the only way to know is by getting added to an Insta group chat that like 15, 20 people are in. So without knowing people, you don't drive. So my highest priority right off the rip once I realized that was to make some connections, message people, get included in group chats. And it's worked out really well because... Um, driving just about every private day there is and there's kind of like a running choke going on in those private day chats that people are like oh, of course tom's here it's a private day ha <laughs> ha you know so i'm really trying to get into as many of those as i possibly can but that's not all there are big events too and just a quick recap you know this off season has for me held of course last year we talked about already the event at the firm which was sick but like this year i drove fuel fest um I drove Spring Break Bash at OSW, and I drove the NMRA Invitational Drift Shootout, whatever they called it, also at OSW. And Fuel Fest, I've never heard of it, it's crazy, because that's not a drift event, like, drifting is one of the exhibitions there, like one of the exhibits there, I guess, and it's mostly like a car show, and it's all about the whole culture around the Fast and the Furious movies and Paul Walker and all this stuff, you know? So I think they sold almost like 10,000 tickets to that event, not for drivers, for spectators, um, leading up to the event. I have no idea how many they sold, you know, at the door, like how many people paid to get in outside of the pre-ticket sales. But I've never seen a crowd like that at a drift event for a bunch of grassroots nerds like us. I mean, that was insane. We were drifting in front of a crowd of... 10 maybe 15,000 people it was nuts and it didn't feel like it was a driver centric event this was more like you were part of a culture 
that is trying to educate people on what drifting is. So this was more like a spectator event, if that makes sense. But it was super fun. Is I actually got to do one lap, one single run with Chelsea Denofa, which of course is kind of like a bucket list thing, you know. Um, and so many of you guys contacted me via messenger or like texted me even as like hey dude you're in the denofa video and stuff and i never had a chance to watch it because when that dropped i was actually at the next event already so i finally watched that and it was so cool to like see your car pop up in one of his videos that was nice you know i'm not gonna lie that was dope then the uh next event that came up was next big event that wasn't a private day it was that nmra thing so that's like north american mustang racers association or something along those lines right and it's predominantly like the thing that they do is the whole <laughs> straight right it's drag racing stuff but they do it at like a venue like osw which of course you know has the oval the skid pad and the drag strip so they were like hmm you know so many young people appreciate drifting when we already rent the venue to do drag racing, we should bring drifters out. We should do an exhibition. So it was kind of like a needed to apply invite only type deal. And I lucked out that I was chosen one of the few to drive there. So it was 35, let's call them Mustang drivers. You know, there was like a handful of cars with Ford swaps that weren't, but you get the idea, right? It was basically a Mustang drift event. And up until this point, if you had asked me what my favorite event ever was, I would say Vibes 22. But NMRA, man, it's real tough. Like, I could flip a coin which one of the two was better. Like, of course, that event, we got to drive with Von and Junior. And that was, of course, that was a highlight, right? I mean, that was something that just blew my mind that he was willing to hop in with us. But I don't want that experience to, like, overshadow how great the driving was overall. You know, there were no run groups. It was just hot grid small amount of drivers for the venue right so seat time out the ass and davy that's the black and yellow s550 uh miles that's the blue s550 and myself we really made it a point to drive together a bunch and we had what i feel like was some of the best driving i've ever done like we were constantly on each other's doors and when i mean doors i don't mean like that whole three cars apart bus length type no i'm talking within the width of a car so lead car one car space chase car max you know and a lot of the runs we had we were for the majority of the run except for the manji where it's kind of hard to do that um we were basically stacked and there's so much footage out there so many videos drone footage oh my god it was just it was so good it was so good and the second day when the rtr boys actually came out and partied we really were like, yeah, you know what? I'm sure, I mean, they have a crew there, right? And one of the things that was made clear to us in the driver's meeting was you don't go to Vaughn and Chelsea and bug them about runs. They're here to work. They create content. They have autograph signings. They have to do stuff to satisfy what their sponsors need. They are not there to party, quote unquote. They're there to work, right? And so we were supposed to respect that. And best I can tell, everybody did, you know? So we were like, you know, we got to just throw down so hard that when those guys actually come to do party runs, that somebody in their crew hopefully notices, like, yeah, you know, these guys you can drive with, they don't suck, you know? So that was our objective, and it worked, because best I can tell, the first tandem train that Vaughn hopped in was the three of us, right? So we were three of us plus Vaughn, and we did, like, three or four laps like that, and they were not necessarily the best laps of the day from our driving, at least from mine, personally, um, but they were decent and Vaughn was on your shit and that was awesome and he did it in that like you know fox body that he's got and yeah that really that is an event that's going to be hard to top and like I said not just because of the whole starstruck oh my god Junior's on my door that was cool but the whole weekend it was just mm, man it was good it was so good so 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 good other big event was spring break bash spring break bash is kind of like these you know like the mad series that are three-day events that's something that's not really that common down here so at orlando speed world they only do two of those three-day events a year they have the spring break bash which i'm talking about now and then in the fall they have black friday drift which was 
if memory serves, my first ever event in Florida in the last year. And those are packed. They have like maybe 150 driver cap or something on it. And they tell you like three or four days in advance, hey, tickets are going to go on sale. And then, I swear to God, it's like sniping on fucking eBay. It's, you have to sit there, refresh, 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 buy ticket. And if you're not on there in the first two minutes, there are no more tickets. That thing is sold out. Like, you blink and it's gone. And I managed to score Black Friday last year and Spring Break this time. And that did not disappoint, you know. Spring Break Bash is not an event with crazy seat time. It's an event to, like, meet people, hang out with people, make those connections you need to in the future get into private days, you know drive with a bunch of dudes and then there is a comp which i botched in yeah it was bad but anyway there was a comp that i could have had fun with had i not sucked so hard but regardless uh the event was good it can't top nmra it just can't but it was it was up there you know and there's also like you know like the whole name dropping thing uh like up north we have driven with a lot of shredders right and there are events where you have pros come out you know like that one time at Lake Erie when uh, when Rome came out in that incognito 350Z and uh, he was just partying with us regulars, you know, that was awesome. But like down here, it seems like every big event has pros or YouTubers or whatever, you know. Like when you look at the, the, the people that drove um, Spring Break Bash, there were essentially all the locals, you know, drive down here. And there was LC drove... Uh, Booth drove, you know, that clapped S15 that he drives super hard. Um, then the, 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 I said the Grinch, the Chinch, um, you know, the LC's buddy, the eight foot tall, 100 pound kid with the 350C. That dude, like, he didn't technically wing King of OSW, but I feel like in the people's minds that drive there a lot, he's probably one of the hardest shredders on that skid pad. Like, that 350C that he's driving is just, must be dialed for that thing, and he's just, he's just down to party. Got laps in with him, which was cool. Um, then, oh, Taylor Ray was there, and uh, I don't know what exactly all he drove. He had, like, three cars there, like a Miata, the one that, that I saw him drive at the 50K. Um, but that was not what he drove, I think. Like, he had his buddies party in that. And then he brought some newer Bimmer, like, I don't, anything that doesn't have round headlights, I don't know what they are, you know, Bimmers, for me, they end with the E32, kind of, E34 era, after that, they're just, so, he had one of them new ones, like, E98, or whatever they're called, and, um, LC had the Zupra out, Taylor Ray also had that Corvette out, so, there were so many people there that people were stoked to watch driving, and then they have the free run groups, you know, similar to other big events, you know, ABC, uh, bros, noobs, and real beginners, you know. And, yeah, man, it was a riot. So, I can't wait to see what the rest of this season holds, because this is just March. And my March has been absolutely bonkers. Like, I barely have time between events to maintain the cars. Like, I barely have time to edit anything, which you may have noticed since I don't post much outside of raw clips so that other drivers can watch their own runs and stuff, you know. It's more like a it's more like a community service than me doing anything productive for my channel. But hey, so far, amazing. I'll throw a couple other clips in about the whole mid-pond gig here. Uh, I'll keep the driving all separate out of the blog. But yeah, man... If you're thinking about coming down here with the intention of drifting, yes. This is something I need to show you guys because I don't think I've ever seen this before in my life. These are Cajun style boiled peanuts. I mean, boiled peanuts are something I've never seen up north to begin with, but with Cajun seasoning, like, uh, your crawfish boil or whatever I mean that is something I need to test and I shall let's see you get one of these suckers out mmm oh my god mmm mmm holy shit not something I say often about peanuts but my god, those are good. Like, I don't think I can ever eat 
raw or cold or it's really hard to describe you know like how peanuts are kind of crunchy well these are boiled and they're super soft and that cajun seasoning has like soaked all the way through them and they have a completely different texture now you know mmm man that's good yeah so if you've never had boiled cajun peanuts you're missing out because this shit is amazing I hope I don't overeat on these but they should be fairly keto oh man I'm not even sure if you should peel these or not because a lot of the flavor is in the husk do you guys know do you eat boiled peanuts with or without the husk more fiber that way <laughs> mm. god that's good I kid you not, this is amazing. Well, look at this little guy. Lots of pepper on him. Mm. Yeah. Cheers. First mid pond impression. <laughs> this venue is a little different in the sense that there is literally no space for anything. And uh, you have to park your trailers on the back of the track. See that? Bunch of nerds. Yeah, so Blue is staying on the trailer for now because her header is dead. So no exhaust. It's kind of not working. Um, the Mustang's already in the pits next to another Mustang, so that's a plus. And now I'm doing grip laps in the truck and trailer around Mid Pond. So first impression here, track wise, this looks like it's going to be a blast. I mean this looks absolutely smashing. Not a lot of elevation changes, so not the US Air roller coaster vibe, you know, but uh, super dope corner radii. It's going to be interesting to see if this is more second gear or third gear work in the Mustang, but I can't wait. This is going to be good. Direction's unclear. It looks like you can actually uh, pull out anywhere on the track you want and just drop your trailer. Drop your trailer. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go all the way back here, crank this thing in 4x4, and drop my stuff right next to. Heck, I don't even know what that is. Some kind of VW based kit car, I'm guessing. Bunch of old boats. All kinds of fun stuff. Alright, time to park the trailer, guys. Mint. This looks about as good a place as any for Blue to spend the night. Whew, done unloading. Uh, truck actually has to stay outside. There's no room for anything. Those pits are tight, tight, tight. Like when people say OSW doesn't have big pits, it's, it's all relative. This is the smallest I have seen yet. So mid pond pits are toiny. So the trailer sits in the weeds, the truck sits out front in the road, in the ditch basically. Bright side though, on the road I figured out how to eat these boiled Cajun peanuts without making a mess. Just chuck the whole thing in your mouth split it in half, suck out the peanuts, and then eat the husks into a spitting cup. So yeah, this is a new fan favorite of mine. You gotta try these, this is amazing. Survived day one at Mid Pond. That track had uh, more of a learning curve than I thought it would. The Mustang is definitely not the ideal vehicle to bring out here. Not because it's not nimble enough or it doesn't have enough power, you know, um, it's just a big heavy boat and those hairpin turns, you almost come to a stop, like you pretty saucy between the hairpins, but then the hairpins are so tight that you come to like bottom and the second gear, whereas you need to actually haul ass in third gear to connect them. And so when you're having a car that's like 3,700 pounds and you're trying to dig it back out of those hairpins, 
uh, unless you have really good self-control and you're gingerly with your right foot, you're just eating tires. So a lot of times when you drive go-kart courses, one of the benefits outside of them being awesome is that you get crazy good tire life. Such is not the case here. Like I'm burning through rubber like crazy. So I really try to pace myself and just go out there, do two laps, park it, let the tires and the motor and everything cool off. But yeah, first days in the books, there is a total of like seven Mustangs here, I want to say. And the objective for today is that we need to get like a, a Mustang train on camera. So, I'll, you know, I'll put some content out there with the driving footage and all that good stuff. By the time I get home, I'll have time to edit that, I hope. But yeah, for now, I think this is it. Mid Pond is a really cool menu, really nice facility. People are chill. Um, yeah, the pits are tiny, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's the driving that matters and the track is really cool. To me, if I were to like compare it to other tracks, it's not quite US Air. Like for one, no elevation changes if you've already seen when I drove the truck there. Um, and I think US Air flows just a tad better, um, for my preference anyway. And in a car like the Mustang, where the self-steer isn't what you'd like it to be, it's kind of a workout to drive it there and drive a good lead line, you know? Um, so I wish the blue car were running because, man, blue would absolutely slay out there. But it is what it is. Still a good experience. And the drive up here, it, it's it's far, right? Even from where I'm at, like, it's seven hours uh, to drive from Florida through Georgia to Alabama. But the drive isn't, like, an obnoxious drive. It's really chill, actually. There is essentially you're going from northern florida to southwestern georgia into eastern alabama and those three regions have one thing in common and that is that there is nothing like barely any farms little town here and there no cities to speak of so the drive is super chill there's no traffic issues or anything like that you know <laughs> and the funniest part to me was you could tell which state you were in because the dirt changes. So in Florida, you have the white sandy dirt, Georgia, red dirt, Alabama, brown dirt. So <laughs> uh, the best scenery was all revolving around the color of dirt in the fields. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a country boy. What can I say? Like, uh, you know, um, city by birth, country by choice. That's, uh, that's just my vibe, man. Bunch of chicks, happy cocks, lots of guns. That, that, that's the way to be, dude. It's like, if you're not country yet, you just you just have to. That, that's the only way to go, man. Freedom. Alrighty. I think I'm going to call it for this one. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try to keep updating stuff on the channel. I know I've been a little tardy on it lately, but... Thanks, everyone, that follows along. Really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, I hope to see a bunch of you guys on track here over the next couple of weeks and months. Because, like I said earlier... This season is shaping up to be all kinds of nice. Cheers.